Congratulations, you found yet another woodworking video concerning glue tests. What follows is a montage of me making jigs for this glue test, and then following that, we will actually perform the tests. Enjoy! I lost the recording of me drilling the faces of the boards, so here is a picture of my drill press instead. This test is going to test epoxy for casting with and without sawdust, pipe bond 2 with and without sawdust, and Gorilla Glue without sawdust. Starting with the Gorilla Glue, the first step is to prep the surface by moistening with a wet towel. I do this and then go ahead and add a good glob of Gorilla Glue to the V of this box. Next is Tight Bond 2 without the sawdust and again add a big glob of glue to the V of the box. Next is Tight Bond with sawdust. I went ahead and added glue to a cup and then added sawdust until it was a peanut butter consistency. Spreading this thicker glue was hard so I went ahead and pulled out my fancy digital glue spreader and fi finalized it with it. Then we went to the epoxy and mixed it up really good and poured a blob into the V again. Finally, we mixed some sawdust into the remainder of the epoxy and again mixed it until it was a peanut butter consistency. So I uh, left these to dry overnight. On the Gorilla Glue, I had added just a little bit of water to the top to get the centered part to uh, to dry. On the tight bond without sawdust, if you can see, it's still wet. With the tight bond with the sawdust, it's, it might be still wet a little bit. On the epoxy without the sawdust, it's dry and hard. And the epoxy with the sawdust, same thing. I'm not having a whole lot of love for the tight bond with the sawdust. I'm thinking what basically happened is, is that the glue doesn't work too well with uh, end grain. Basically now everything is end grain. What I'm thinking I might do is add some glue. So I'm just gonna, just like that. It's exciting stuff here, isn't it? You're gonna definitely wanna watch more of my videos after you watch me glue up with a toothpick. Well, it's been a week and uh, I have allowed all these glues to set and we'll see what happens here. So here we have the Gorilla Glue. And what's interesting is that these little bubbles here are rather fragile and they were way more fragile last week. But in the week, it's gotten kind of hard and then that center part where there's not a bubble, you can stick a nail in it but it's pretty firm. And then the tight bond without sawdust, it doesn't show up on the camera too well. And then this is the tight bond with the sawdust. This side here is just a straight up tight bond with sawdust and it's pretty hard, sunk in on the center, right? But And this side I added some extra glue and you can see that the glue is not completely set yet, but over here it is and it's even harder still. And this is the epoxy without sawdust, and that's hard as a rock. And then this is the epoxy with the sawdust, and also that is hard as a rock. So I have developed a highly accurate and precise method to measure the strength of these bonds. Well, it's actually not all that accurate, and it doesn't have a measurement and it's not going to be precise. But I think for what we're doing here, it's going to be enough and it will maybe inspire somebody else to do a highly accurate and precise method of measurement. What's important here is that we will uh, be able to determine which is stronger and I think we're going to have a clear winner and a clear loser in this whole event. So we have that. Now this 
is not glued at all. Only glue exists is here in each one of these. I have put my piece of wood with the bond in the vise and I'm going to set another piece of wood as a fulcrum and then I am going to put a wonder bar here. I'm going to press down on the wonder bar. The end of the wonder bar is right here and it's going to press as close to the glue joint as possible. That way I'm not really pressing on the wood so much but on the joint as much as I possibly can. Once I have completed I will go ahead and hit it with a hammer just to see what happens. This is the Gorilla Glue. Here we go. That was no pressure at all. It didn't really affect the wood at all. This is the tight bond without the sawdust. Ready? One, two. That was a lot stronger, but it shattered. It ripped off some of the wood here and here. This is the tight bond with uh, the sawdust. I was really expecting that to be the weakest of them all. So far, that was the strongest. It really didn't bond that well. I mean, it, the wood didn't break at all. It was the tight bond that failed. This literally just separated from the plywood. Now, the epoxy without the sawdust. Wow. Without a doubt, this is the strongest. It literally ripped the sawdust for its entirety. Uh, you can see that the tight bond did not, I mean the epoxy did not fail at all. It was the wood that failed. And then finally, now this one is not going to give us a true test because it's such a bigger piece, but still why not destroy things? And it literally pulled it out of the vise. So what I need to do is really crank it down and get a second piece of wood. Hey! Success! We broke it. It ripped off the wood even thicker and it actually delaminated a little bit but it ripped, ripped it off and uh, it was the strongest but then again it was not a fair test because I did such a big piece. I think a valuable piece of information here is going to also be what's going to happen with an impact test on this partially because it's fun to hit things with a hammer and partially because I just am curious. That pretty much destroyed it, but then again it wasn't that strong in the first darn place. Gorilla glue got compressed. I bond without the sawdust. Look at that, that just shattered. There is see cracks in this. Off to the recycle bin you go. Honestly, I'm able to peel this away with my fingernails. Now, I should have done this before I uh, hit it with a hammer. This is the side I had added glue. You can see the difference in color. I think as a filler, this would be fine, but Really, look at that. I'm able to peel that off pretty easily. Now the epoxy, I suspect this is going to shatter, honestly. Let me spin it around a couple times. Well, I am wearing safety glasses, so uh, let's see what happens. It 
just cracked. And it's like glass, actually. Look at that. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but it is sharp like glass. And then finally, this is the piece of epoxy with sawdust. And I suspect this is going to uh, react the best with uh, a hammer test. Uh, you don't hear this, most likely, but I got pieces of epoxy flying all over it, but it's breaking off in very small pieces, little chunks, and it's actually pretty damn strong. And, uh, I mean, that's a pretty decent effort just to break that little piece off. I think clear winner in this whole event is the epoxy with sawdust. So what have we learned from this entire event? Well, we learned that I like to hit things with a hammer. We also learned that you're willing to sit through this video and watch me uh, bust things through a hammer. The epoxy did not fail itself in the uh, spread test. It was the wood that failed. A little bit of the wood failed on the uh, tight bond without sawdust. The tight bond with sawdust was a little bit uh, unimpressive, to say the least. And as far as this test is concerned, the Gorilla Glue just wasn't there. Finally, just remember, after every woodworking project, you should always count your fingers. You end with 10. Good job.